In the previous video, um, we just showcased how you can actually um, get the character customizer uh, character blueprints integrated in with the Voxel Plugin Pro. By default, to replace the default uh, box skeleton that comes with the example, uh, worked overall it worked pretty okay. Um, however, after playing around with like the actual server and the client, there's a couple problems with just that change. Um, when the folks on the Discord channel uh, requested some changes. They also said that we should probably take the um, blueprint and uh, subclass the voxel character as well and we'll show you a couple reasons, uh, a couple issues and how to fix that with this. So it's a little bit more advanced but um, once you got your um, uh, character customizer um, look and feel in there, you probably want to play around with the controls a little bit more and have it a little bit more of a smooth gaming experience. So I'll show you how to kind of do the next phase of this integration here. So should be pretty quick. Um, I've pre-built these, I've packaged them up, um, and we're going to run a dedicated server here locally um, and uh, a couple test clients. Um, we'll just move this one over here and connect. Uh, just going to open up to localhost and you'll see a bunch of nonsense scroll by, some sort of issues going on, don't really know what that is. Um, but uh, again, you can see that the character is connected to the server, she's running around. Um, now here's the first issue, you'll, you'll notice when I right click to look, it's very, very slow and this camera isn't tracking very quickly. Um, uh, I don't fully understand what the issue is at the moment, but we can fix it once we superclass some things and add in some uh, extra blueprint steps. So uh, we're actually just going to make her stand up here on the hill, and we're going to face um, back down towards where our second character is going to spawn down here, so we can kind of see what's going on with the second client once it connects. Um, so if we start at the secondary client, um, and again, we'll just uh, we'll just kind of move it over so we can see going on here make sure both windows are visible uh, we'll connect to the local server local dedicated server and so oh well oh, that's fun um, <laughs> let's uh, restart that I thought we got rid of that um, but maybe it's not all the way if the world's still spawning in while we're standing right on top of it but uh, let's let's gamble here a little bit and see if it works for us. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it might just be that I, I popped the spawn a little bit higher um, because the world may not have been fully available um, when we started it out. So here we go. We You can now see uh, the second client down at the bottom of the hill. Um, another issue, I'm mashing the space button, which we'd expect to jump by default. Uh, jump is not currently working and then you'll also notice that the uh, animations don't appear to be playing so while the clients connected the positions there the animations aren't syncing up currently so this is kind of an issue uh, if you're trying to have fun with your friends and they're just kind of sliding around when I was working on a multiplayer version of Skyrim we kind of had that for a while because we hadn't synced the animations yet so I kind of feel the pain so um, again this is the default with just adding an invoker to the default blueprint um, that comes with the character creation. So now let's uh, make it a little bit more complex and a little bit more interesting and actually you can see a lot of the stuff gets cleaned up once we superclass the voxel character um, and then we also actually copy over some uh, blueprint event graphs from the multiplayer client. So uh, with that we'll just shut down these two clients um, and the dedicated server and we'll do the changes quick. So step one is we're actually going to super make sure that the the CC female blueprint class actually is apparent um, is uh, is the super class of the, our multiplayer one. So if we go and we actually go to uh, edit some things, uh, we'll just trace through the class the class hierarchy until we get to where we need to go. So you'll notice that um, this is our multiplayer BP uh, blueprint. And if we go to class settings, it shows us that it extends the CC female blueprint. This one, actually, if we go to edit that um, and we look at the class settings, this one extends the CC character blueprint. So we're not quite at the place we need to, to, to do the override. Um, if we go back down to the um, original one, the base class for all of the um, character customizer, um, 
character blueprints, this is where we can actually add in and override the parent class here. So uh, once you're down here in the editor to the um, CC character blueprint, um, you can just go to class settings and where it says the parent class is the character, we're actually going to make this the voxel character. Um, now this is the recommended um, procedure for for the quick start guide in the quick start guide for voxel plugin. Uh, step one, it does a voxel invoker component to your character and step two, it actually says, hey, make sure your character extends the voxel character because there's a bunch of stuff in there that I'm assuming we don't have wired in yet. So that's what we're doing here. We basically said, hey, uh, let's take the, the default character customizer blueprint and just extend the voxel character instead of the normal character and now we got some voxel plugin goodies that are included in there. So we'll hit save. Secondarily, we want to go to our overridden, like highest level one. And you'll notice the um, event graph here doesn't really have anything. Um, it just has the default stuff. And I don't really know where like the controls are coming from in the, the voxel plugin stuff. I'm assuming it's like from the default controller. But what we can do is we can enhance the controls of this particular character with the stuff that comes with the, um, the sample TCP um, example as well. So if we close out of here, and go to our voxel multiplayer example uh, multiplayer example here and they include the voxel example multiplayer character and we open it up and if we look at their event graph you'll notice that uh, they've got a bunch of stuff in here you can fly around it's got some movement input it's got some looking around with mouses and stuff and so this is actually missing from our um, uh, voxel world um, blueprint right now. So what we can do is we can just take it out of the default one, copy it, and then we're actually just going to go back into our multiplayer override that we created, our subclass that we created up here. And we're just going to um, add these in. It says there's a fly uh, function in here. I added it, but it caused a compiler error. So I'm just going to say do nothing for now. Don't fully comprehend what's going on there. Again, this is nice, quick, and dirty. And so what we've done now is we've now included all of the event graphs that the uh, the sample TCP multiplayer um, code had from the Voxel plugin. And we've put them and injected them into our character customizer base female component that now overrides the Voxel character on the very base. It's a lot of stuff, some complicated things, but really we only did two things. And you'll see kind of like how this enhances the game. So if we hit save here, um, I'm actually going to just do the packaging so you can kind of see what that looks like. Um, I've got two build targets here, uh, dev server test and dev server test server. And um, shouldn't take too long to package these both. I'm doing for Windows 64. Um, I've already got these here. You can kind of see the output, nothing too crazy. It's doing some stuff. Uh, there's one piece of um, integration that I haven't fully meshed between the two in this particular video, and that's some of the more advanced um, actions and input. Uh, the the character customizer comes with an awesome interface to be able to tweak all of the clothing and the face and stuff that I haven't integrated in yet, but um, I'll probably do another video on that once I figure it out. But this is more to just kind of get the character moving around so it syncs the animations between the different clients, um, and it should get you a really good place to just start with these two components working together. Okay, so we've built the client now, um, and so we're just going to change the um, build target to the, the server component, the dedicated server. Um, and I'm just using the default procedure that if you just search dedicated server, Unreal Engine, um, nothing too fancy. I'm not using any custom code. I'm not doing anything outside of just the standard packaging here. Uh, it's not using Steam integration. It's using just the TCP uh, multiplayer out of the Voxel plugin that comes with Voxel Plugin Pro. So cool, we've now rebuilt our client and our server and we can start them up and just show you kind of the difference between the two. Um, we'll start the server up here. And you'll notice one thing right out of the gate, there's this stream of um, warnings that, again, I don't fully comprehend. There's something that's not completely linked up, uh, but we'll get to that probably at some other later date. And then we've got our client here. So we can just start up one of our clients. Uh, like before, we're just gonna move it over so we can have them side by side. We'll connect in. Um, and uh, connect to the local, the local server. You'll see it stand here. Uh, first thing we can notice is we can now jump. Uh, the jump animation is a little weird here. 
Um, but if we're moving, you can kind of see, you know, the legs are moving around, this kind of stuff. And so um, the second thing we ran into was that the, the rotation speed was really low with the default stuff before we overrode stuff. Now it's nice and smooth. You can see it, you know, rotate around really quickly in real time, which is much better than watch me uh, scrolling the mouse like seven or eight times to get, get around. So again, we're just going to kind of look down the hill. Um, and previously, we were not able to see the uh, animations for the character that had connected the second client um, because they weren't synchronizing for whatever reason. Um, but now, once we get the second client in connected, you should be able to see it pretty OK. Um, so we'll connect our second client to the dedicated server. And we've got our second instance in here. Right away, you can see that now the, the character animations are synchronizing nicely. Um, they're working. They're working pretty well. And uh, we just kind of face them all together here. You can see the walk animations start and stop all nicely. The jump animation kind of does some stuff. Uh, they're not completely synchronized between the two, but that probably has something to do with me not completely configuring everything to hook in really well. But at this point, I think you're much closer to um, a more finished look and feel and polish. Um, and again, really what we wanted to do was just make sure we completed a more advanced configuration that allowed your character, the uh, the character cu character customization character to extend the voxel character. And then we also went in and uh, basically took our voxel multiplayer blueprint and added in some more advanced controls that integrated in with the, the voxel plugin in a more seamless way to give us better mouse movement and other things. So again, uh, it's kind of complicated, a little bit more advanced than the basic integration, but you can see just with a couple of tweaks, um, uh, it made the uh, character customizer uh, blueprint uh, work much more closely to what you would expect right out of the gate. So uh, look forward to the next video. I'm going to try to get the character customizer UI and interface so you can actually change your character and it'll save it between, you know, you connecting and your friend connecting so you can all, you can customize your characters a little bit. Um, appreciate you taking a look. Uh, hopefully this is helpful for people who are trying to integrate these two components. Um, and feel free to comment and let me know if there's anything you'd like me to do or um, if there's anything that I'm doing wrong that you're just like, hey, you should use these hotkeys because clicking around is kind of lame. So appreciate it. Thank you so much.